Good morning, students. Today we are going to discuss about structure of polynucleotide chain. Polynucleotide chain, as you know, that it is basically found in DNA and RNA. And uh, actually, the micromolecule of DNA and RNA are, are uh, many nucleotides. So the chain is called polynucleotide chain. Here you see it is found in DNA and RNA as given in the textbook. And the nucleotide has three components as earlier uh, I have discussed already about nitrogenous base, pentose sugar, uh, ribose in case of RNA and deoxyribose in case of DNA and a phosphate group. These are, uh, uh, there are two types of nitrogenous base here in the textbook given. It is purine, adenine and guanine are purine nitrogenous base and Pyrimidine nitrogenous base are cytosine, uracil, and thiamine. Cytosine is common for both DNA and RNA, and thiamine is present in DNA, while uracil is present in RNA at the place of thiamine. A nitrogenous base is linked to the pentose sugar through a N glycosidic linkage, or you can say glycosidic bond to form a nucleoside, such as adenosine or deoxyadenosine, guanosine or deoxyguanosine, cytidine or deoxycytidine, and uridine or deoxyuridine. When a phosphate group is linked to fifth hydroxyl group of a nucleoside through phosphodiester linkage, a corresponding nucleotide or deoxynucleotide depending upon the type of sugar present. In case of RNA, it is called uh, nucleotide only. And in case of DNA, it is called deoxy uh, nucleotide. In case of RNA also, it is called ribonucleotide, okay? Two uh, nucleotides are linked through three days, five days, phosphodiester linkage to form a dinucleotide. So in this way, when many nucleotides are joined with the help of diphosphodiester linkage, it is called polynucleotide. So this diagram shows the polynucleotide strands of uh, DNA. Here you see, this is the pentose sugar. It is called deoxyribose sugar. Here at first position, it linked with adenine. And in the uh, <coughs> third position, it linked with phosphoric acid in the first nucleotide, in case of first nucleotide. In case of second nucleotide, the phosphoric acid linked with the uh, fifth position and here also third position. In this way, we can say in one strand, the direction is three days, five days direction. So here in the next phase, you see the direction is always anti-parallel. In one side, it is three days, five days. In other side, it is, is five days, three days. In case of RNA, single strand is found. So here, only one strand of DNA is, one strand of polynucleotide chain is found in RNA. So DNA is a acidic substance. Who first identified uh, Frederick Misser in 1869? identified DNA as a as acidic substance. And before that, he named it as a nucleine instead of DNA. But due to technical limitation in uh, isolating such a long polymer intake, the elucidation of a structure of DNA remain in a very, uh, remain exclusive for a very long time. That means its actual structure cannot be determined chemically. Um, chemically. So it remained as nucleine at that time. But after X-ray analysis that was done in 1953 by James Watson and uh, Francis Crick, uh, that DNA uh, produced uh, as differentiation data produced by Maurice Wilkin, Wilkin and Rosalind Franklin, proposed a very simple but famous double helical model. And we can see that double helical model of DNA actually uh, done by Watson and Crick. But X-ray differentiation data were discovered by Wilkin and Rosalind Franklin. So DNA is a double helical structure. One of the hallmark of their proposition was base pairing between the two strands of polynucleotide and a strand. That means DNA, what is the properties of DNA? There is a base pairing. However, their proposition was also based on the observation of Griff. That means there is another theory put forwarded by Arvin Cargriff that for a double stranded DNA, the ratio between A equal T and G equal C are always remain constant and equal. 
equal to how much? Equal to one. So the base pairing confer a very unique property to the polynucleotide chain. Then they are said to be complemented to each other. That means A always pair with T and G always pair with C. So here some salient feature of DNA. So in the textbook, in the phase number 597, it is given a salient feature of double helical structure of DNA is, it is made up of two polynucleotide chain where the backbone is always constituted by sugar phosphate bond. And the two chains has always anti-parallel polarity. That is one, um, one stand is in five days, three days direction polarity and other stand is three days, five days direction polarity. Third salient feature is the base in two strands are paired through hydrogen bond. In case of A and D, there is a double bond. And in case of C and G, it is a triple hydrogen bond. The fourth salient feature is the two chains are coiled in a right handed fashion. The pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometer. And, and there are roughly how many pair of BP? 10 pair of BP in each turn. So, here is the double helical structure of DNA as given. This is the double helical structure of DNA. And in each turn, they have how many base pair? 10 BP. The distance between a BP in a helix, that means the distance between two base pair is 0 0.34 nanometer. And the fifth salient feature, feature is the plane of one base pair stacks over the other in double helix. This is that means there is an additional hydrogen bond and it confers stability. So sometimes it is asked why DNA is more stable in biological world than other instead of protein or RNA. Because it is a double helical structure, it consists of two bonds, that is an glycosidic bond and phosphodiester bond. And beside that, it has an additional hydrogen bond that confers stability to the double helix. So, up to this, we have discussed today about the DNA structure and about the package of DNA helix, we have already uh, discussed in earlier video, uh, earlier video in the, and uh, there is another important point we have to discuss and that I have said earlier about euchromatin and heterochromatin. That means in the nuclear region, there is a two type of chromatin material and some region of chromatin are loosely packed. They are light stain and those are called euchromatin. And the chromatin that is more densely packed and is thin darkly are called heterochromatin. So here we found two basic structure in case of chromatin material in nucleus, euchromatin part and heterochromatin part. Euchromatin is transcriptionally active. That means it is genetically active part and heterochromatin is inactive part. So these are the differences between euchromatin and heterochromatin. Moreover, there is another point. Besides the histone protein, the DNA uh, nuclear chromatin reticulum possesses non-histone chrom chromosomal protein. It is found in the nucleus. So in the next class, we are going to discuss about the source for genetic material. So this part we are going to discuss during our next class. Thank you, student, for attending the class today.